Hey guys, Spartan117GW here today, and we're going to be talking about the new Netflix movie, Sandcastle, which is about the early part of the Iraq War. Alright, so, I know I'm kind of being a shitbag and John waning it, but it's more for you guys to be able to hear what I'm trying to say. So, getting on with the story for this movie. It's a very interesting story. Um, it was written by a, a former uh, specialist, Chris uh, Rosner, sorry if I butchered the name. He was a civil affairs soldier uh, during the uh, Iraq War. And of course, Matt Oker, the main character, is, is a civil affairs soldier during the Iraq War. Um, Matt Oker's character initially doesn't really want to go into the war. Um, he tries to get out of it, but he can't. Um, so he ends up going into theater, and you're introduced to his civil affairs squad, and you get a little bit of uh, a taste of what the early part of the war was like. Um, the initial combat, and then immediately, I guess, what uh, what Rosner was um, saying in one of his interviews, the honeymoon period, where people are kind of celebrating, and, and you're kind of getting to be the hero and help the people, you know, give them water and stuff. And then, from what he described, and it makes a lot of sense, almost overnight, the insurgency happens. And that's when things really take a turn downhill. Um, so, of course, uh, they try to bring water to people, and they get ambushed. Um, they're trying to work out with the locals um, to get some help, and they they do a few things to kind of work with the locals um, to to bring them aid and to really you know win the hearts and minds and get them to work with them. Um, in the meantime, they're also helping out this A team, uh, the Special Forces Detachment, and one of the main missions is to fix this water pump station that got hit by by one of the attack helicopters, um, and the um, water pump station kind of becomes an analogy for the country because. The soldiers are there to do the right thing, and even if they do the right thing, something will end up happening um, that shows there's a price to pay either way. Um, and for Ochre, it's trying to you know do the right thing, help these people, right? He's part of a civil affairs unit, and one of the things civil affairs do does is um, beyond all the support they give to the uh, you know, special operations community is you know win hearts and minds, you know psychological stuff like that, um, and. You know, they have their challenges, there's near ambushes, um, you know, people get killed, uh, and, um, you know, eventually they get put into a position where, um, you know, one of the locals that was helping them gets killed. And that really, you know, hurts them real bad. Uh, and, and they, they, um, you know, it's just like, you know, you're trying to do the right thing. But then there's just people constantly tripping you every single, every step of the way. You do something good and then something bad happens to you. You do something good and something bad happens to you. Um, and I think that um, they really portrayed the monotony of that, or the um, kind of just, not almost like the helplessness, but like, uh, you know, as many times you can try, there's just always, there's always that one more thing. Um, eventually, they team up with the ODA and they go to hit and raid this little area where the insurgents that uh, killed one of their, um, uh, you know, local nationals that was helping them um, was at. Uh, and they go, they, they raid and, um, in, in that raid, they still take some casualties. There's there's always a price to pay. Um, at the end of the movie, you know, and, and the thing is, this isn't a big war epic. This is a intimate experience about one guy's experience during the war. You know, it's interesting to see how the guy didn't want to go there in the first place, but now he wants to stay because he has that feeling of incompleteness. Um, you know, one, because, you know, you know they're losing guys. But two, you know, they're they're paying such a heavy price, trying to do this thing, trying to help the locals. Sometimes where it's questionable if the the locals even want their help. There's a lot of shady stuff that happens in Iraq. Just a lot of I mean, some guys who are just selfish and they want to take the American money and they don't they don't really care about helping their own people. And you know, of course, you have the people who actually want to help build their communities. And uh, for him, it's a uh, it's a deep story because. You know, that, that water pump station, they get so close, so close to fixing it, right? So close to, you know, at least doing their part of setting things right and fixing things. And then something happens, um, an ID goes off, kills a bunch of guys, pretty much ruins their effort. And before you know it, he has to leave the country. And so you have this feeling of, you know, unsatisfaction because you couldn't do what you wanted to do, what you set out there to do, what... what you know, win the hearts and minds. Because um, you don't want to say it's a failure, but 
at the same time they didn't get to complete what they set out to do and I think that's a feeling a lot of people may have and it's kind of an analogy for the whole Iraq war right the whole point was to rebuild the country after the initial invasion and of course that's been a really rocky step and of course you have ISIS now and that's a whole nother political thing but they really don't get too polit uh, political in the movie so let's dive into my favorite part uh, which is the authenticity in the gear as you can see I'm wearing kind of complete um, OIF style gear I have a, a PASGIT or PASGT helmet which is what a lot of guys were issued when they first went in um, it doesn't have, you know, the little, uh, NVG shroud on it. I'm still, need, I still need to get that. And speaking of which, in the movie, they used the wrong NVG shroud and that bugged the shit out of me during the entire thing. This is an IBA, or Interceptor Body Armor. Uh, it's the Woodland variant. What's cool about the, cool, I guess, even though it was kind of a deficiency at the time, is the U.S. Army was so ill-prepared to go to war, or they went to war so fast, they didn't even have the right body armor color. So you have guys wearing desert combat uniforms, or DCUs, with woodland IBAs. But in a way that kind of created a very iconic look, even though that's kind of the wrong thing you want to wear. Eventually the army started issuing, you know, DCU um, IBAs. And eventually by then they already had make, started making the switch to ACU. So you can really visually tell movies and TV shows what part of the war it was focused on. If their military advisor was sort of on point by the type of gear they're wearing because this is definitely very early to mid-war um it's kind of funny that term gets used for the iraq war now because that's something you typically hear about guys talking about vietnam or uh um, world war ii but it's kind of a thing for iraq now because it not to say it was so long ago but it was like more than 10 years ago when we invaded uh but going back to the gear uh, I think uniform wise there's like missing rank, um, shoelace, I mean there's a lot of like you can nitpick this movie to death but there's nothing that's so bad that it's typical of your like other Netflix movies um, so it's nothing super eye glaring but you can definitely find flaws if you look for them um, especially in like the combat portions but hey you know it was the wild west it's not like Everyone back then was probably the most trained. Like, I'm not expecting the civil affairs unit to be, like, the most trained guys. Not like 11 Bravos or anything, but some of them may have been, you know, transferred into the unit or whatnot. But, you know, it's not like an infantry line unit. So I can see how the main character was running around wasn't, like, the most trained. But maybe they could have had better training for the actors to kind of make it a little bit more authentic. I think Hollywood still kind of struggles with that. Um... The one thing that bugs the shit out of me the most in the movie, Sergeant Major with the long hair. What the fuck? I've never seen a Sergeant Major with hair like that, ever. Um, I think they probably had that because the actor probably had like a contract where he had to have his hair that way for like another movie or something. That was just like way too over the top. Um, but the dialogue wise wasn't too bad. It's pretty serviceable and not too Hollywooded up. But there is that one funny line about boot blousing later in the movie that I, I got a little chuckle out of. Um, as one of the more authentic lines in the movie, but um, in terms of authenticity of the tone, the tone of the movie was kind of authentic because they're, portray they're portraying the situation where um, the it's not necessarily the most gung-ho and the most you know, glorious, um, so the tone of the movie is pretty authentic, uh, but gear could definitely could have been done better. Alright, so my overall thoughts of the movie. Now, this is definitely a Netflix movie. Uh, it's not something that you would pay to see in the movie theater. I en you know, I enjoyed it to an extent. There's a lot of flaws that I can nitpick at. and The acting was pretty serviceable. In some parts, it's kind of good. Um, you know, and the more that I think about it, the more I read the articles and the interviews about um, the guy who was actually there who wrote the movie, the more the movie makes sense to me. And the more that I grasp the ideas and the concepts of what the movie was shooting for, overall, it doesn't feel like an absolutely amazing movie. But in terms of the tone, it might be one of the more accurate Iraq War movies. Um, but it's still, it's not like a standout like like Generation Kill, which is like a knockout, 10 out of 10. Um, so I still feel like Hollywood still has some work. And I think what Hollywood really needs to do is give veterans a little bit more control of the filmmaking process especially if they're involved because that's that's what's going to sell the movie is the um you know, authenticity is really going to help um of, of course good actors too <laughs> that never hurts but overall you know it's a decent movie to watch for a night but it's not going to be like one of your top 10 
war movies of all time, especially because this isn't really like a full epic war movie. It's it's a more intimate war movie, so it's kind of on something more like um, the Hurt Locker kind of scale in terms of you know the events that happen. So thank you guys for watching. This is Spartan One One Seven GW. I got my Patreon. I got patches for sale on my website. Please check out the website. It's got some cool stuff, even a recommended gear section. I'm gonna be working on. Um, some loadout videos and maybe even playing a couple games like this uh, in case you guys didn't know I was prior 82nd um, I'm still working on some of this gear, but um, yeah, that's I'm always been fascinated about this, Specifically the early war because of the gear and stuff like that, but thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video We we'll doing more movie reviews on war movies later this year. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time